Hey everyone, welcome back. Thanks for joining me again today. For those of you who don't know, I am Chef Alex Otouche. But before we get started, please do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Not only does it help me and my channel grow, but it helps you not miss out on any great future content. Now, sous vide, that's what we're talking about in today's episode. We're gonna be talking about what it is and where it comes from. We're gonna talk about the equipment that you need for it. We're gonna go over a few general rules of safety. And we're also gonna be talking about a few general rules of thumb when it comes to actually cooking different products using sous vide. Before we get into what it actually takes to cook sous vide, let's actually talk about what sous vide really is. Sous vide is French for under vacuum. The creation of sous vide was actually discovered by scientists who switched out using a flame for Bunsen burners and actually used a controlled water bath. Sous vide made its way to kitchens in the 1970s when chefs were trying to figure out a better way to cook their foie gras without losing all that amazing fattiness that comes out of foie when you cook it the traditional way of searing it in a pan. Once sous vide started getting some traction in kitchens, manufacturers started reaching out to more popular chefs to figure out how to create meals within these bags that you can just drop right in the water and cook a whole meal just in that bag. It eventually reached to one of the greatest chefs of our time, Thomas Keller, and he was one of the first chefs to really use sous vide in his kitchens and really show the world what sous vide cooking can really do. But sous vide cooking is more than just a fancy technique. It's all about time and temperature, which are the two most important elements to cooking. And when you have complete control over the time and temperature, you end up getting constant, consistent products every single time. And as far as home cooking is concerned, sous vide is great for meal prepping. You can get all of your ingredients into one bag, all your aromatics, all your seasoning, everything. You can even freeze that bag after it's sealed, pull it out, and drop it right into your water bath. It's a great technique for having meals prepped out in advance. Is sous vide the end all of cooking techniques? No, absolutely not. Sous vide is just another tool that chefs can use and even home cooks like you can use. It doesn't take away from other great cooking methods. You still should know how to grill, saute, bake, roast, all the other important cooking fundamentals. Sous vide is just another technique to help elevate your home cooking or professional cooking. Now that we have a little bit better understanding of what sous vide actually is, let's take a look at some of the equipment that you're gonna need to actually accomplish sous vide cooking at home. There are four key components to sous vide cooking, and those are something to hold your water, something to remove the air, something to hold your products, and then something to regulate the heat. The most basic element to sous vide is having a proper water bath. Without the water bath, there is no sous vide. So you need to find something that's large enough to hold the water for the product that you're cooking, something that's gonna withstand the temperatures for a long period of time, and just something you know isn't going to crack or splinter so you have water leaking everywhere. Personally, when I sous vide, I like to use these plastic Cambros because they have a restaurant quality durability. They are large enough, they can hold a decent amount of water for larger projects like doing a whole chicken. They have a nice thin rim so I can connect my sous vide circulator with ease. But a Cambro like this isn't your only option. You can also use a pot just like this. A heavy duty pot like this is also great for sous vide because they usually have a thin rim so you can connect a sous vide with ease. But also if you don't have a circulator and you just need to put it on a burner, it'll hold up to the heat. You know because of the metal construction, you don't have to worry about leaks too much. The next key element to sous vide is having something that's gonna remove the air from whatever bag you're putting your products in. Luckily, I was fortunate enough to have a roommate that came with a food saver like this. This one in particular comes with a lot of great features. It houses the plastic bags, it has something to cut the bags so they can be a specific length, and it just does a great job of sealing your products. If you really want to go to the extreme, you can try to find a tabletop chamber vacuum sealer like most restaurants use. This just gives you a lot of different options for the different pressures and the different type of foods that you can actually use with it. If you don't want to invest in a food saver, you can use a container of water like this, a Ziploc bag, and just force the air out with the water itself. I'm gonna demonstrate using this can here. All you have to do is pull your product from the bag. And you just wanna push your product down and then the water is gonna help force all the air out of the bag. And when you get close to the rim, that's just when you wanna seal up the bag. And because this isn't completely sealed, you can keep that out of the water and then just clip it right to the side. 
Another key element to sous viding is having something that's going to regulate the temperature of the water. Traditionally, that is done by using a circulator like this. There's a lot of different circulators on the market. There's the Anova Precision Cooker, which I've heard is really great. There's the restaurant quality ones like PolyScience, which are great, even though they're very expensive. They just open you up to a lot more features. Personally, I really like this. This is the Jewel by Chef Steps. This circulator, like the Anova and a lot of others, come with their own app, and it's connected to your phone Bluetooth that has recipes on it, uh, specific temperatures and settings, and it just makes the overall process of sous vide a lot better and you don't need to go into as much research about time and temperature. This is also a great product because not only does it come with a nice clip that fits into most products like so, it also has a magnet on the bottom so if you have a nice metal pot like this, it just sticks right to it and it's not going to go anywhere. If you don't want to get a circulator that is perfectly fine, you can use a pot just like this, fill it with water, you want to get a nice thermometer like this one here. It's an InstaRead thermometer. You pop this out and it's going to find the temperature very quickly. If you can find something to position a thermometer in your water, hold it in place, and all you have to do is maintain that temperature by adjusting your heat. It's a little more labor intensive, but it will work just fine. Bags are another key element to sous vide. Without the plastic bag, there's nothing to remove air from and there's nothing to put your product in, so it's not even sous vide without the bag. There are a lot of different options when it comes to the bags you use. This is the Food Saver brand bag that came with the, the Food Saver that I personally use. Um, the bags are a nice thickness. They do a great job and hold up really well. They come in these nice long rolls so you can cut them to whatever specific size you want. But if you don't want to invest in any of that, simple gallon size freezer Ziploc bags will do just fine. But because you can't actually seal them properly, you want to make sure that you're clipping them to the outside of whatever water bath you're using so that way no water gets in and it prevents air from actually getting out. And if you're curious about checking out any of these products that I mentioned like the Chef Step Jewel or the Innova Precision Cooker or even the Food Saver, I'll have links to those products in the description down below. When it comes to cooking cereals and grain sous vide, don't bother. There's no added benefit to cooking them um, sous vide. You might as well just stick to your classic cooking methods for cereals and grains. Let's say you're going to take a tender cut of meat, like a tenderloin for instance, and you're going to cook it in a hot skillet like this. You're going to want to get this hot skillet to about 400 to 600 degrees Fahrenheit so you get that really good sear on it. And then you're going to constantly flip it until you get a nice center temperature of let's say 145 degrees. So by the time you reach the nice internal temperature and you cut that tenderloin open, you're going to see the different layers of the different temperatures until you get to the center. It's going to look like a bullseye, which is why it's called the bullseye effect. Now if you took that same tenderloin and cooked it sous vide and set your circulator to 145 degrees, that's what it's going to come out at. You're not going to have a bullseye on there. Even if you leave it in there for a little too long, it's not going to affect the overall temperature. It will affect the texture of the meat, but the temperature will be 145 degrees. And that's why sous vide is great for a lot of proteins like beef, pork, and chicken. Now let's talk about tough cuts of meat. When you are working with a tough cut of meat, like a short rib or a shank, you want to cook it for a long time because you want to break down all those connective tissues so you can get that really nice fork tender quality meat. Now if you do a traditional braise, which is completely fine, you're going to do it at a higher temperature than what a sous vide circulator can reach. And it results in a really great product, but the problem with doing the traditional way is that you lose a lot of moisture to the, li the cooking liquid and it doesn't hold its structure as well. If you cook a tough cut of meat sous vide, it's going to be a lower temperature for a longer period of time. You're not going to lose any juices to your cooking liquid and because of the lower temperature, the way that the connective tissue actually breaks down is different, so it's going to maintain its structure a lot more. So let's say you cook a short rib sous vide, it's not going to just completely fall off the bone. You're going to be able to keep it on there really nicely and cut into it with a knife and fork. Not that it's not super tender, because it will be. So whether you're going to cook a traditional braise or sous vide, a shank or a tougher cut of meat, both will result in a really awesome product, but I would recommend trying sous vide at least once just to give it a chance. Fish 
gesture is one of those tricky things that no matter how much experience you have, you can mess it up by taking your eye off it for just a second. And that's why sous vide is so great for fish, because it removes a lot of that human air. You're going to put that fish in the bag, put whatever seasonings you want in it, and you're going to set it to a temperature, and that is exactly how that fish is going to come out. Even if you leave it in there for an extended period of time, it's never going to go above that set temperature, and that's why sous vide is so great for fish. And if you're a purist and you just like the taste of good fish, sous vide is only going to enhance that fish flavor even more. Because unlike traditional cooking methods, nothing is coming out of the bag and nothing is going in during the whole cooking process. A lot of people think that sous vide is primarily used for meats and hard vegetables. Well, that's not the case. Fruits, just like clementines or even apples, are really great and benefit a lot from the sous vide process. If you're looking to elevate your dish with some cooked fruit, sous vide is a great option because it's going to prohibit the oxidation of your fruit, which means it's not going to turn brown. Your final product is going to have a colorful, vibrant finish of beautiful cooked fruit. Vegetables are another great option when cooking sous vide, whether it's a hard vegetable or a soft vegetable. Like take onions and fennel for instance. You can pick those whole sous vide and because of the sous vide process, you can cook them until they're super tender and you're still going to be able to cut them because they're going to maintain their structural integrity and not become mush. Other hard vegetables like radish, corn, or endive are going to not only retain their flavor better because of the airless environment, they're going to retain their color even better than traditional cooking methods. And you can enhance the flavor even further by adding marinades or seasonings or aromatics right in the bag and it's going to create amazing tasting vegetables. Normally sous vide cooking is associated with savory products like proteins and really hard vegetables, but that's not always the case. Sous vide cooking is actually a great technique for making some dessert based preparations such as ice cream bases or custards. Traditionally when you make an ice cream base or a custard that involves egg yolks, you put it on a stove top and if you don't properly monitor your heat or you set it too high, you run the risk of overcooking your eggs and scrambling it and ruining your entire product in general. But with sous vide cooking, it eliminates all that air because it has a constant temperature. So you can drop that custard, all those egg yolks, everything in the bag, leave, go have a drink, whatever you want, come back when your timer goes off and you're going to have a completely great custard base or ice cream base without having to put forth any extra effort. The safety guidelines that go along with sous vide cooking follow the same guidelines you would use for using a slow cooker or a crock pot. It's still low temperatures for an extended period of time. Just follow those same basic safety guidelines for your food and you'll be just fine. There you have it. That is sous vide cooking in a nutshell. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and hope you learned something. As always, I want to hear from you. Let me know in the comments down below what your experience with sous vide cooking has been and let me know if there's anything you'd like to see me cook on my channel. Please hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on any great future content. And above all else, thanks for watching.